Hello and welcome to Quinn's the Bull in the post-truth apocalypse. I'm Ben. As always, I'm hanging out with Mike. Hello. And Claire. Hey. And today is 9-11 part two. The conspiracies, the uh, underlying theories surrounding that it wasn't just a straightforward day as we told you about last week. The conspiracy hooter has been removed. Hey. Put that to the mm. side. And at the end, I will tell you all how it wasn't brought down by explosives. It was, in fact, an, an occult mega ritual. They put a spell on it. It was. Uh, it's just an occult <laughs> mega ritual. So that's it's those people unwilling sacrifices. Put a spell on you. <laughs> Never seen that again in my presence. <laughs> What's that from? A Rocky Horror Picture, isn't yeah. it? Oh fuck yes. Everyone raves about that, but I think it's fucking bollocks. I haven't watched it. It's very camp, isn't it? I tried to watch it once and it was like, oh, this is just awful. If you don't like musicals, you're not going to like it, eh? In all fairness, the only musical I've ever seen in my life is South Park the movie. Mm. That's good. Yeah. That's how you do a musical. Yeah. Anyway, let's thank some new returning listeners and then we'll crack on. Where shall I start? Newark in New Jersey. Birmingham, United Kingdom, Kansas City, Missouri, Cairns in Australia, Washington DC, Berlin, Germany, uh, Los Banos in California, Frankfurt am Main in Germany, Aintree in Australia, Bengaluru in India, Mondekanj, oh, that's nice, in Luxembourg, Helsinki, Finland, uh, Junkos in Spain, Indianapolis in Indiana, Rockbank, Australia, Croydon in the United Kingdom, Atlanta, Georgia, Salt Lake City, the Mormons are back. <laughs> Dallas, Texas, Kelowna, Canada, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, Puerto Gaville, Missouri, Boardman, Oregon, Guadalajara, Spain, and Ashburn, Virginia. God, crikey, a lot of, lot of US listeners. Crikey. Crikey. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, you get a lot from the Americas. Yeah, thank you to everybody. Yeah, thank you. Maybe they're really interested in 9 11. Is it that? I'd, I'd imagine that they'll probably, if we get it wrong, they'll send us some very insulting messages. I'm sure they're interested in all our stuff, Claire. Yes. Indeed. All right, then, let's start with the conspiracies. We'll run through the top ones. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's not go for the big one to begin with, because we'll build up to that. Okay, yeah, like a build up. Inside traders knew about attacks before they happened. Okay. Right before the September 11th attack, some fishy business happened within the stock market and insurance firms. An extraordinary amount of put options were replaced on United Airlines and American Airlines stocks. Do you know what put options are? No. It's betting that they're going to lose money. So if they lose money, you get money. Right, okay. Yeah? If they make money, you lose money. You're right. betting against them. Mm, right, okay. These are the same airlines that were hijacked during the attacks, and many speculate that the traders were tipped off about the attacks and profited from the tragedy. The Securities and Exchange Commission launched... Uh, what a joke they are. <laughs> ...launched an insider trading investigation in which Osama bin Laden was a suspect. After a see, they received that information from at least one Wall Street firm, so why are Wall Street firms dealing with Osama bin Laden to start with? <laughs> yeah. Because, I mean, he's got to have somewhere to put his money. He's getting donated. He may have had his assets frozen in the Middle East, but people are still donating money to him. They'd have got a middleman, wouldn't they? It, you know, it might have just been linked back. You mean he might have been like Barry Larden? Yeah. <sighs> or his dog, yeah. like Rover Larden. Yeah, they're putting, you know, these, these sort of bets on, because that's what they are, essentially, aren't they? Yeah, of course. But if you knew nothing about the attacks, why are you... Betting against United Airlines, American Airlines stocks. Yeah, because if you think about it, I mean, they aren't going to crash overnight unless something happens. They're, they're pretty steady, aren't they? They're the two biggest domestic airlines carriers. Yeah, nothing was... Nothing's there's, untoward. There's no, duck, there's no, like, blips in the road that it could, you know, send their stocks crashing, is there? On the 10th of September, everything's just going to be, you know... Oh, why are you putting them on? Well, you know... Got a feeling. You never know. Never know. And then the next day, boom, 9-11 happens. And their stocks plummet. Yep, and they make a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, insider trading is nothing new. Of course not. I mean, I'll give you an example of a, it's slightly off this, but pretty much the same kind of thing. 
Dick Cheney, Vice President of the US government, President on the day for 9-11, yeah. um, had been in the White House, the White House for about 40 odd years, started as Gerald Ford, Chief of Staff at 33. Wow. Okay. Uh, he had, he'd been in the White House in one capacity or another for the best part of 40 years. Went to go and do be one of the chairman on Halliburton, and a major defence and oil contractor. When Bush came to him and said, I need a VP, Cheney was like, well, all right, I'll have a look around and see who can do it. I don't want to do it, though. Ah, you know what? There's no one better. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole of America, there was no one more qualified than Dick Cheney to be vice president for Bush. And his dad, Bush's dad, warned against him, didn't he? He did. He didn't like him. He said, the war hawks don't have him. Him and Rumsfeld, who was the defence secretary, said, the war hawks don't have him. Anyway, so to, because he's got to leave Halliburton to take his position as vice president. Halliburton gave him $34 million as a parting gift. You have been paid. You have been paid to resign. <laughs> oh, crikey. That's loads. Right. And then, after the invasion of Iraq, there's a non tender contract, so they're not accepting any other bids. They give it to Halliburton with no other competition for a billion dollars of oil. $34 million payout, $1 billion payday. Wow. Not bad profit. No. Now, so do I think this one's real? Absolutely, positively, lutely, yes. That people, rogue elements in the US government knew about this and may have told a few select people who they didn't want to lose too much money. That would be proof, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or those people that were like leaking that information, you know, were doing it for money as well. Yeah. I've got some inside information. It's worth at least a million. Yeah, yeah. Why not? A couple of million. Because you, you know, you stand to lose X amount of million if this happens. I just just say that the uh, the morals within the uh, financial sector are. Not great, are they? Because oh. at least you're not going to come out after and say, well, you know what? I just watched 3,000 people die yesterday. Looking at old dog Bob over there told me to do that. Maybe you should have the FBI talking to him. Yeah. You know, well, you know why didn't they donate some of the money? Or well, all of the money, you know? Nah, I can't do that. But yeah, you are right. It's, I can go with that. Securities and Exchange Commission, I take it they're a joke then, Mike. But yeah. Is it was? So yeah, they're regulated by the fucking the banks and that, aren't they? They, they? they buy them off, don't they? It's all bullshit. We learnt that in 2008 when they... I don't know if it was exactly them, but the ones that were selling the, the packages of, of debt and they were labelling it as AAA when it was D's and E's and shit bundled together. Oh, yeah. People you're never going to get the money off. No. Yeah. And of course, so people were then betting on that, saying, oh, that's AAA, that's solid. You know, when it wasn't, it was dog shit. And then everything come crashing down, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I, I go for that. I, I would agree that there was some of that going on. People, I think people know about this in advance. And what about the air defence? Told to stand down. I mean, there was several exercises going on. Vigilant Guardian was the big one. That was up north. There was Operation Tripod 2 happening in Manhattan itself. All these days. What was that one? Um, it was like a civil defence thing. Is in in Manhattan. When you know we were on about last week, like that twenty minute delay. Yeah. Like, think about it. All they're doing is going through different people, going up the ladder. Is this a drill? No, it's real. Is this a drill? No, it's real. Come on, you're having me on. No one's doing that on this day. It's a drill. No, no, honestly, it's real. Imagine the convincing of getting the the slowness of getting that information mm. up the chain of command. I think you can probably account that twenty minute delay on the phones. Twenty minutes. Really? Yeah. I can't, I can't believe that. 20 minutes is too long for me, you know. It would only take one call to scramble these things. There's only a few jets left in that part of America. Most of them are up in uh, Alaska. <laughs> convenient, isn't it? it? Is, yeah, it's convenient. No, there was there's, there's two bases within, like, you know, spitting distance yeah, of New but, York. But they weren't fully manned. At best, there was like a few, few dozen fighters left. And okay, yes, there was two that were on standby and could have made it to New York with seven minutes to spare, but they just never got the order to go until it was too late. No, I, I can't. I can't buy that. That it would take that twenty minutes, not with an attack on on the country. 
not not. What are you chance. saying then? What do I think it is? Yeah. Well, someone's known about it or. or and blocked it. And blocked it, yeah. They've sat on the information. Yeah. It's possible. We yeah, don't know. They've got through sure, some general who's on a, who's in the know, maybe. But if you want this attack to go ahead, and yeah, look real. Yeah. You want your fighter jets away from the area to respond. You want them as far away as possible. Alaska, perfect. Yeah, I, I'd say that you know this day has been chosen because they've you know the terrorists, the, yeah. the inside job people, whatever narrative you go with, they knew it was going to be on September 11th. So they made sure that the other military yep. operations were going on there you know thereabouts the day before the day after or on the day you know to, to distract and get them out of the way yep see i go with that to a point but i also do think that it, it would, the delay and the confusion would have cost you know you go into all these different stages it's a drill you're taking the piss you do it the, today what do you mean it's happening today there's something happening today everyone's at the country we're on a drill we're on yeah a... i think there's a bit of that as well mass confusion yeah I think mass confusion plays a big part yeah. in, the, in the response. Were they told to stand down? I don't know. It does seem odd that the Pentagon never shot anybody down. She never shot that jet down. Yeah. You know, you'd think if they came into that area. I mean, come on. Well, not long ago, a Russian aircraft went into Turkish airspace. It did. Um, How long did it last? 40 seconds or something before it was shot down? Yeah, something like that. And the time it took for the missile to acquire the target, lock on, and the human operator to press the button was something like... It might have been 40 seconds, it might have been just over a minute. But either way, it was fucking quick. Yeah, and that's the Turks, yeah. not the Yanks. Did I cover last week about Army Brigadier General asking Captain Leedig uh, to take uh, yes. the place of the Director of Operations on the morning of 9-11? I was hoping you, know, you were mention that. His inexperience could have cost a couple of minutes as yeah. well. It's okay, his I don't second, know about this. What's it's this? his second day on the fucking job. He's just been qualified. <laughs> Go on, Claire. Tell us. Yeah, so he's the Director of um, Operations for the, the military. Mm -hmm. So the Army Brigadier General asked this captain that... It, He's literally in the command and control room. This brigadier, it's his job to run this command and control room. And he decides... This is it Nora. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's he decides? Are you going to go play golf today or what? And he goes, no, no. <clears throat> we haven't got an explanation for that. He's just asked this, what's his name, Captain Leedig. It's That's how it's spelled. But asks him to take over at 8.20 in the morning. Hmm. So as soon as the second building crumbles, he just waltzes back in. Oh, and fuck you, no. It's a bit 102 fishy, minutes that. later. Yeah, it's a bit fishy, that, isn't it, I think? It's weird. It's like, he's like, oh, by the way, Captain, I know it's your second day on the job and you're newly qualified, but you're in charge today. Yeah. You get I'll some be, bad oysters the night before. <laughs> I'll yeah. be back in 102 minutes. Oh. Why are so precise, you ask? Well, I know what's going to happen. Dodgy, that, isn't it? It is dodgy. And they were both promoted. Oh, after the event. Why doesn't that surprise me? The officers always look after their own. Again, it's, uh, it's them failing up again, isn't it? If we fail, we lose everything on the streets. Mm -hmm. If they fail, they get promoted. It's madness. Yeah. I don't know if they were told to stand down. I think... I mean, right, that is weird that on this specific day, a particular day, the general goes, oh, hey, well, the captain, you're in charge today. I know it's only your second day, but you'll be fine. This drill was on, maybe he's thought, oh, it's below me a bit. Give the new boy some experience, he's going to do all this. And then this happened and he didn't have a clue what to do. Or he, he Captain Ledig. Not, yeah, he might not have been in the know at all. No, I don't, like, think, hey, the, I, and I don't think the Brigadier General was. I don't... but. Remember, the more people that know about this, the more likelihood you've got of a leak. So you want to yeah. keep it really close. That's the great thing about armed forces. You don't need to explain yourself. Yeah. If you're higher in rank, you give an order, they're going to do it. Yeah. No matter how stupid, well, how much they disagree with it, they've got to, they've got to carry it out, haven't they? And remember, Cheney is in charge today. Bush is out for the day. Cheney's in the war room on 9-11. So you've got two inexperienced... Well, well, no, he's more By experienced, design. isn't he, actually? If, 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 you of course. Know, than Bush. I thought, you know, get rid of Bush, send him, 
You know, so anyway, for the day he might he might stand the uh, he might rescind the orders the uh, the air force up to get involved. Cheney wants this to happen. Yeah, he would send Bush with only nine year olds at his level. So. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing is this all by is, I I would pin this squarely on Dick Cheney from the stuff I've been I've been looking at this week. He want he knew this was going to happen. He wanted this to happen, and he wanted it to happen on this day because he knew he would be running the show. He could delay decisions at the top. Or not take any actions should yeah. he choose to. So you think the the, the brigadier and, and and that was just like you say? Oh, he, he needs a bit of training. He's you know. Yeah, I think it's just a really sad coincidence. Coincidence that. I, that. Could, I could go with that. Well, yeah. I'm not for sure about that actually. Go on then. What? Well, why? Especially in a day when you're understaffed, or whatever, because everyone's on exercise. No, the war room's still running at full staff because it's that's its job. It's a con- command of control. Norad. Norad is that's still running at full staff, oh, isn't it? Room, it's just like is it? I thought most of the jets have gone up. The Alaska. jets have, but the Norad is in Cheyenne Mountain. It's this massive national security facility built yeah. into this mountain, and that's where they monitor all the air defence from. Yeah, but most of your forces aren't there. The base are they? They're up in no. Alaska. So there's every chance the general thought, ah, I'm gonna have the morning off. It could be an initiation type, ah, it's dropped him in the deep end. <laughs> see, see Gus Wim, see Gus yeah, Wim. Yeah, it. it had to be this day, no, I don't believe in coincidences. No. Oh, you're going to later on when I give you the occult stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go on to the one that you're passionate about, Claire. Go on then. Planes didn't make the Twin Towers collapse, it was bombs. I actually don't think it was bombs per se. I. Uh, I think they, you know, they they coated. Well, it could be bombs, but definitely a reaction. There's been um, in the particles found. They've been analysed by scientists, and they've found um, what's it called again? Thermite. Thermite. I know exactly where you're going with this, and I found out Go on. that the guy who said I've got these thermite samples had no backwards chain to link them to nine, the wreckage of nine eleven. Okay. It's just this guy is basically, he's the one that said, oh, but towers don't fall down like that. He's, he's a, I think he's a structural engineer, he's a truther. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, they must have been brought down. He's actually got kicked out of his university because of it. Has he? Yeah. They say that he wouldn't provide a backwards chain to link it to the 9-11 wreckage as he's claiming it is. I watched a documentary last week and the one woman sent in a box of ashes to like you know because after there was a lot of scientists wanting to you know test the stuff she sent a box of the the dust because she lived you know a few blocks away from because a lot of it was just taken so fast by you know these dumper trucks that just come in mm. and, and cleaned the place up yeah what was is she literally pulling that from the wreckage or is she just oh yeah i've got this i've just i've been keeping this box of dust well, a lot of people were thinking what, what I'm thinking, you know, when they saw it. What is the... Uh, let, let's look at uh, actual probabilities here. What is the probability that both of those towers come down so neatly and both looked exactly the same as they were as they were coming down? Why didn't they lean? Why didn't they... What is the probability, Mike, of both of them coming down identically? Not leaning, not faltering... You know, yeah, if one had come down like that and the other one had lent and fell. I've seen a lot of videos of demolitions. Yeah. And they all seem to do the same thing. Exactly what but the that, trade yeah. centre did. Yeah. Yeah, they did, but that's because the floors are giving way, so they're just coming straight down. The floors they're go- are giving way. The floors go- are giving These way. floors, like, they're giving way <laughs> faster than free fall. So the plane... They're, they're, giving, they're, giving away, they're giving... They are giving way faster. Those steel, those steel rods are, are giving way... In fact, they are snapping faster than the speed of snapping. sound. Snapping! <laughs> they're breaking it out of the wall. They're breaking it out of where they're mounted into the walls. Claire's shaking her head. Mm. Once each tower began to collapse, the weight of all the floors above the collapse zone... But the weight go- was already there, mate! Mm-hmm. How can it collapse when the weight was already... There's no the extra weight! The fire's making the steel weaker! There's no extra weight, though! Well, you got to turn the whole building. Throughout the above the impacted zone where the fire is, that is heating the steel beam supporting the floors above it. That doesn't need, it doesn't need to melt the beams, it doesn't need to do anything like that. 
All it needs to do is make that steel soft so until, until it sags and sags and sags. But what about and then it can't, it can't hold the floors above it. It hasn't got the strength to do it. But, okay, I can believe that from, like, because none of the planes went below, crash below 70, yeah? So it yeah. Like, like, 70 to 90, wasn't it? So I can believe that for the, the, the immediate five floors. Mm. But once we're below five floors of where the planes are actually hit, that strength would still be there. The weight is already there. Nothing is put in extra, nothing sitting on top of them buildings and pushing down on it. There's no extra force. There is no steel melting at, you know, 30, 40, 50. Fires are raging 50. up and down the building. I remember the jet fuel. They're up and down the, the jet building. fuel was leaking through the floors. It was setting on fire. The aluminium of the plane was reacting with the sprinklers and the there water. Was that was going fires molten. On 20, 30, 40, 50. There when was that no plane. Fires until it got up to. If, if, if there was on someone 60, you know, maybe. When that's them, 10 floors down from when where they, it hit. When it hit, a fireball came out of the elevator shaft at the ground floor. It's because it was some sort of bomb, mate. No, it's a fireball going to go from, from it's a, 70 to... It, went, it travelled all the way down to the bottom floor. Killed people on the ground floor. Can you imagine the floor. force that that would have to have? Imagine the force of a decently laden 757 going into a building. Okay, I can believe that. that. At 500 miles an hour. I can believe that, but that still ain't going to cause it to collapse. I, I can't believe that these things <coughs> would come that far down the shaft, not to the bottom. No chance. They might... You know. That's documented, big eyewitnesses to it. Well, what, what happens to all the buildings that have suffered similar fates and have never collapsed? Well, no other building's ever been hit by a plane well, before. It has, not like that. The Empire State Building. Yeah, it? but we're not talking of going at 500 miles an hour with a, a modern jet. And what about the skyscraper in Madrid that, that burnt for over 20 hours? Just because a building's never fell because of fire, apart from the towers, doesn't mean it can't happen. It looked like a banana was peeling me. I'm aware of that. I've sat there and watched them bloody things fall. <laughs> go He's went down in 45 minutes. Yeah. Fuck off. 45 minutes and 10 seconds per fall. What, 10 and 9, sorry, it wasn't it? Or 10 and 11, I'm not sure. It's pancaking. It's a chain it's reaction. A, it's a... <sighs> it oh, transmits yeah. the force, the fall below. Mm-hmm. Unable to absorb the mass, so I was reading from the top. So once each tower began to collapse, the weight of all the floors above the collapse zone bore, bore down with pulverizing force on the highest intact floor. Unable to absorb the massive energy, that floor would fail, transmitting the forces to the floor below, allowing the progress to collapse downward through the building in a chain reaction. Engineers call the process pancaking and does not require an explosion to begin, according to David Riggs, a structural engineer at the American Society of Civil Engineers that worked on the FEMA report. He could have been bought off. He could have been. The FEMA report, that's that's the one that, that is tied to the government and is the most crooked of all of them. I, I was watching this guy from Underwriter Labs. He did one of the commission reports. He questioned the FEMA report and the, the, uh, the, the narrative, you know, and he was sacked and because he de debunked the pancake theory you know, like I'm sure I said yes last week, they tested it in uh, steel in furnaces, much hotter than the conditions on the day, and the steel structure didn't melt. It hasn't got to melt. It's just got to get hot enough to get weak. I just don't believe it. So, All right, hang right, on, so let me he, find he's it. He's debunked this pancake theory. Just you know, it it didn't melt. Yes, it it might have bent, but it didn't react the way that the, the tower was reacted. Right. And he was sacked. So what does that tell you? It tells you that some somebody didn't didn't rate his research. Yeah, well, they didn't want his research coming out. Coming out. Yeah. Well, they didn't rate it. Jet fuel burns at eight hundred to fifteen hundred degrees Fahrenheit, which is not hot enough to melt steel. No. It just melts at two thousand seven hundred and fifty Fahrenheit. However, experts agree that for the towers to collapse, their steel frames didn't need to melt. They just had to lose some of their structural strength, and that required exposure to less heat. Retired New York Deputy Fire Chief Vincent Dunn said, I've, seen a lot of, I've never seen a melted steel in a building, but I've seen a lot of twisted, warped, bent and sagging steel. What happens is the steel tries to expand at both ends, but when it can no longer expand, it sags and the surrounding concrete cracks. 
senior engineer of don't the Ameri- doubt that. I just still don't yeah. think it's enough to bring down a so fucking was, skyscraper. There was a, these steel yeah. structures went right up through the middle of it. Yeah. Yeah. Surely, if it's not melted it, there would be all these steel spikes. Maybe the building, yeah, would That's have co- come from around it and left the 20 steel spikes in, you know, melted, a bit twisted up, looking like, you know... Uh, yeah, a bit of a sort of twisted hand in the hand sky. Hand in the right? sky, yeah. It might and all the firefighters, it, it, yeah. they were saying, they were right by it when it went down, they said they heard popping sounds coming down. Pop, 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 pop. That is the gas and the air being yeah, forced out the of the sides. Being, it could be, but it could also be explosions. It could be. They've been, been placed there beforehand. Remember that steel, back to the steel again, so it loses 50% of its strength at 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. And at 1800 degrees, it is probably at less than 10% of its strength. Okay, so. Yeah, that's for the, f- the steel few floors where. Yeah, but then you've got the, the fire. Fo- was. Remember, those floors aren't. The floor above isn't supporting the weight of the floor above it, is it? Alright, there's two floors. They're not supporting each other's weight, they're, that's supported by the steel that supports from the centre and at the edges. Mm-hmm. When that floor falls onto the next floor, and all the floors above it do the same, they fall to the, the floor that's standing. That can't take the weight. It's not used to taking that weight. All the tonnage above, every single thing on the floor above is crashing down onto the floor. It's not taking the weight because the floor doesn't take the weight. The supports in the middle and at the edges take the weight. When all the stuff in the middle falls down the middle, the middle can't take it. Hmm. But then the sides would have stayed up, right, wouldn't they? It'd just been collapsed in the middle. In your theory. All the steel... Everything come down. You've got paper seconds. as well, remember, burning. That could have spread the fires out right, to the I sides. Can, I can believe that near the very middle of the crash site, we're getting to, to heat of, you know, 800 to 1,100. You know, but as you go up a couple of floors, yeah, heat rises. So, you know, it'll, it'll have burnt more above than below. Like, so below, I'm thinking... You know, the, that like two floors would be affected, but anything lower than two floors, so below the plane, how's that going to be heated up then? Mm. Yeah, above the plane, because heat rises, flames rise and whatnot, but still, unless you're at that total, you know, flash point, the, the heat point of the, the starting of the fire, where you're going to get, where the most fuel is being combusted, you're not going to get those heats. It still fell at tremendous speed. It fell faster than a G. It fell faster than France. Exactly. It's standard three four. It's it's not. I don't understand why you you accept that they wanted the buildings down. Yeah. Why would they leave it to chance? These fuckers don't leave nothing, nothing to chance. chance. It's not hard to put some explosives. No, it's, I guess it, but you go. It's. And it had a lot of. Forty five minutes. Then it went down. And the the one that was hit second went down first. Yeah. And what, I just can't believe what's it. What's that? What? I can't remember what. Um, I did at the time because I didn't you just accept it for what it is. Didn't the fact that the report was so rushed and there was a lot of disputes within it. So I just think it's all. Didn't one of the up. firemen hear over the radio someone go pull it like that? And then he was like, Don't oh, know that. like that. That's World Trade Center 7. Yeah. And then three seconds later, boom! It, it just drops like a pancake. Did the steel weaken in that, did it? Yeah. <laughs> that was actually built in a really odd way. Its spars went up at a um, sort of a seventy degree angle. The main supports. You've never seen the front of World Trade Center Seven in the footage of NLM because you only ever see it from the back. But apparently, those supports weak and give way, causing collapses on the front, which spread fires through it, and then you ended up with it potentially eating the diesel tanks. The building went down. No one reported a fire in that building till four o'clock in the afternoon. You could see smoke clearly coming from the towers and you know you know building seven you'd have seen a, a, a separate plume of smoke wouldn't you not in all that smoke you wouldn't have that there's zero visibility that dust when they went down what time did, did it, what time it did it come down to, to clear though come on with it within an hour and a half it was mm, but maybe it's a question of no one was uh, fires internally in in trade center seven i don't know the damage from the two towers coming down apparently damaged it enough to bring it down a few hours later it just couldn't take the weight you know, is that one laced with explosives because it's the Special Operations Office? Yeah, probably. I thought it was bomb-proof as well. To a point. So it was reinforced concrete. 
Yeah. In, yeah. That, in that one specific floor, yeah. Yeah. Not all the building. But that floor was reinforced concrete. No, I thought so, yeah. And it just come down like that. It's a lot of damage when all that rubble comes crashing down though, isn't it? There was no rubble, Ben. It was dust. There was rubble, the chunks of concrete coming down, falling out. I mean... It was dust. It was dust, wasn't it, Mike? It looked like dust. I guess. Well, I'm not so convinced that it's still bombs. Why they fell like that, I don't know. But I, I think that it's plausible. The, the floors just basically took each floor down successively. The weight coming down. Well, I, I believe that they were somehow some of the structures. They got like workmen in, pretending to be painters, whatever. I don't know how they've done it, you know. But they've got people in, and they've sprayed this like thermite stuff on. I believe, and as the the heat of the plane and everything, it conducted the heat downwards. And as it sparked, that's what sparked it all going, you know. And it's it's all took it. Because there was the, that sort of lava stuff fall, falling out the window. That was the molten point. aluminium from the plane. Yeah. Which, to which point out, uh, molten yeah. aluminium does actually react with water. It gives off hydrogen gas, which can build up and cause explosions. But was it molten aluminium? Because um, I've also seen that molten aluminium looks silver. Now, what was coming out the edge of the, the, the World Trade Centre was like an orange molten... Yeah, it was also on fire, or wasn't it? So it could have been the aluminium, which then cooled in the fall. Mm, no, but aluminium doesn't glow when it when it's liquid. It, it looks silver. So, yeah. so that that you know, the, there's other questions about what the hell that was. True, but that was that could have been just debris. Could have been anything, I guess. I mean, it's sitting in office space. It's still, it's got people in it. It's got, oh, who knows. What, what about in World Trade Center Seven, where they 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 were doing investigations into some sort of was it banking fraud or something? All that paperwork got yeah, all that got destroyed. Destroyed. Coincidence. Mm. That's, an, that's another fishy one, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's an odd one. I can see where you're coming from. If they want it to go down, they're going to make sure it goes down. Yeah. But surely a couple of planes should be enough. I mean, these no, I things, it is. these I things know. swayed fifteen feet and then corrected themselves when they went by. That's a hell of a kinetic force that's not being absorbed by the meshing that's usual. Because remember, they were built with a central column; they only had meshing around the outside. What do you think about? Like, we didn't actually address the probability of both both of them coming down. You know, the What's probability it? of that is so fucking high oh, no, of yeah. them both coming down pretty much identically. And not not swaying or, or or crashing, or getting you know that crash halfway down the building, then it just crumbling and falling to one side. Them both being that perfect, it's too. The probability is out this world, you know. Yeah, I just don't think in forty five minutes it's enough to take it down. I really don't. No, it's maybe too, I'm too wrong. Neat, too maybe neat I'm wrong, but it was. Far too neat. I'm not like I say. I'm not a structural engineer. I don't really know about this stuff, but it just seems unbelievable to me. It would have been for, for me. It would have been more believable if they'd have got maybe you know where the the planes had crashed, got the tops to fall off onto the ground. It would have looked, but then they'd have been left with the mm. mess of the towers and they had to re. And the re fact that it looks identical to every other controlled explosive demolition that I've seen. Yeah. They use it, this is this is the thing. Looks the same. Mm -hmm. Well, are they supposed to fall like that though? If they do go like straight down, isn't that the way the skyscrapers? I don't think they're meant to fall then. That's well, the point. Know. Not that's the whole point, then. isn't it? These well, things are, are built to fucking withstand things like earthquakes and hurricanes and shit. And didn't didn't they? You know, when, when well, they built these, because even Donald Trump, you know, back. On the on the day of September 11th, they got a picture of him on the news, and he was like, "There is no way, there is no way planes would do that like that." And he was like, "This is some sort of inside job." Oh got, God! It's been pulled off the internet. Oh, well, now I'm, now I know Trump's on my side. I might just have to chase me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was like, "I was there at the building of them. Yeah. They were tested and stuff um, yeah. to to stand one of the biggest planes." Yeah, but pl Not the, ones the, that, the, the planes that hit were twenty five percent bigger. Than the planes they tested with the towers. Yeah, still like twenty five percent is not enough for me. Mm. But anyway, we could, this could go round in circles. Should we move on to the next thing? Yeah. yeah. All right then, Pentagon. 
Pentagon crash might be the most puzzling event of the day. Theorists maintain that the impact holes in the Pentagon were much smaller than a commercial American Airlines plane. A oh, missile! Mm -hmm. They also question why the plane was not shot down prior to impact, as well as the plane impacted a section of the Pentagon that was vacant due to renovations. 127 people died in the Pentagon. Yet another coincidence. Nice empty spot. Yeah. Nice empty spot. There was the financial sector where a few days recently the Pentagon had literally turned around and said, hey, um, we got a problem with our budget? There's a $2 billion black hole in it that we can't account for. And they're like, well, we're going to have to look into that. And then the next thing you know, there's a hole in the side of the Pentagon where that just so happened all those records happened to be stored. I find it a little bit of a coincidence. I also find it a little bit of a coincidence that they never really released the proper footage for this, slowed down properly. Well, the FBI went and hoovered all that up in the days after 9-11. They did. They went, and went to every, every burger bar, every garage. Yep. Just went, give me a... Yeah. They just, I, I could just imagine them just walking in, you know, black black tie, mm. black suit. And the only thing they released was Give that one in. video. It was so many, wasn't it? It was, it was a three frames or something. Like, yeah. I was going to say, it's only frames. Yeah. It wasn't a full video. Uh, yeah. yeah, and just what, you could just see something come across the screen and then an explosion. Mm. Where's the fucking play though, was it? No. I mean, where's the... There's a paper plane. Yeah. There's that across and just went, what? Have you seen the, the 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 footage though? I mean, there's there's like not the footage, the um, the photos of the impact site. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like a fucking round hole in yeah. the wall, isn't it? Where's the impacts on the walls and the planes with the engines? Where's the wings? Yeah. Just they, disintegrated band. Just just like that. So it's a five meter diameter hole. I've seen this this one guy sort of estimate it at from. Right. He can do perspectives and or photos and stuff. Oh, so he uses current like the size of certain things around yeah, it yeah, to yeah. gauge the size of the hole. So yeah, he he he's saying <laughs> five meter diameter, and this Boeing seven five seven was thirty eight meters wide. Yeah, that's wingspan. That's wingspan. Yeah, what about the body? Well, the body is still going to be a good six, six to eight meters. Yeah, something like that. So I was trying to just picture the last time I was on a plane and... Each plane's got about eight, 80 to 80, 90 centimetres each, haven't they, at least? Maybe even a metre. Nah, yeah, I haven't got a metre's worth of room. No, but I'm talking I about fit, I fit the into frame it. with the, you know... Yeah, well, maybe with the chair, maybe a bit less, but I, I mean, I'm sure it's less than a slave had on the middle passage. Because <laughs> like, I just about fit in an airplane chair. And I'm like, I spend the entire... Con yeah, you don't want to be... Comparing that to a slave, a slave fucking trader, do you? They ram you in like him. <laughs> was the last time you were on Ryanair? It was terrible. It, it is. It's all it's still better than being in the in. bottom of a boat, though, isn't it? Chained up, then. <laughs> yes, yeah. well, yes, it is. Yes, yeah. but I'm still modern day problems. A spirit, yeah. spiritually shackled, Mike. Oh. <laughs> to not first class. Get first class then. You don't get first class on Ryanair. It's cattle class or nothing. That's it. The one I went to Amsterdam on wasn't actually right now, it was, oh god, I can't remember what it was called now, but that was a propeller plane, it was terrifying. <laughs> so, 38 metres wide, and this guy from the picture estimates it to be 5 metres diameter hole. Yeah, with no impact marks in the walls from the engines and the wings. People were saying that there was no, like, litter as in, like, you know, plane litter, there's a bit of propeller, a bit of wing, a bit of... Well, even, you know, a chair, a body. And supposedly, you know, there was plane litter being picked up, you know, sort of found the next day after it. Was it? Strange, that. That was, like, the next day. So I think they've gone, shit, I... shit, we forgot this bit, chuck a few bits of... Yeah, but how dumb can you be? You're supposed to be the highest... You're supposed to be the best military bays in the country. And you're like, shit, we forgot to put the debris down. What happens if the Pentagon was just a, a last thought, a last ditch? Right, so the, the main deal is the Twin Towers and they want to get rid of Building 7. Somebody finds out about this this financial issue at the Pentagon and what they're investigating just on, like, I'm talking the ninth hour, you know, but enough time to get another plane in the air or to, to arrange something. A drone? Or a, a missile. That's why it was a missile. They couldn't mm. arrange a plane in the air that quick. Or well, what happened to the plane that was allegedly hijacked? And if it was a missile that went into it, what happened to the plane? 
The theory goes that plane was shot down before it reached its target. Shot down where? Before it got to New York, yeah, uh, Washington. But, well, yeah, but where's the where's the debris for it? Where's the... That's the thing where that would. Or would... well, maybe it just wasn't hijacked. Just made up. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that plane was made up. False passenger list and false passenger yeah. list. Yeah, that's probably more realistic, isn't it? Yeah, because you'd have loads of people coming out going, oh, my, my auntie was on that plane, and we're, you know, and then you actors, feel... Actors, crisis actors. Yeah, and then you feel... Or, you just, or nutters that you just let be nutty, because like, oh, great, they're propagating the myth. Mm. Yeah. Anyone that comes in, crisis actors, that's a, that's a possibility. Yeah. You see, they always make it using the same ones. I'm not sure if they're that stupid. <laughs> I don't know about that. And let's not mention that. Let's mention the pilot of that plane, alleged pilot of that plane. This is like a really technical banking manoeuvre that you've got to decrease in large, continual, and in, in gradually lengthening loops until you can come in at the level required to hit. Huh. It's one of the most complicated descents to do in a plane that size. Apparently, this guy couldn't fly a single-engine Cessna properly. Yeah, he had to have someone with him. He still wasn't qualified as competent enough to fly one of them on his own. Well, most of the hijackers, that were alleged hijackers, came out and said, uh, hang on a minute, I, I, I wasn't one of the hijackers, I'm here, I'm living in Lebanon or something. Yeah. It's dead fucking dodgy, isn't it? Yeah. Half the hijackers are still alive in other countries. Parachutes, Mike. They obviously, are, you know, used their faces and their pictures, mm-hmm. the US government. Yeah. Or... They didn't do it, they didn't finish the job by going and having those people assassinated. I think that the... The half that were not disputed, they were in the planes that hit the the World Trade Center. And obviously the Pentagon and the other one, there's no doubt that- They had to make up names for them hijackers and they fucked up. There's no doubt that some people died in them first two planes, isn't there? Yeah. What if there weren't planes? What if they were holograms? Yeah, that's another theory. Some people say they're holograms. I don't know how that'd work. There was B-52 bombers, right, above New York. There had been, Coated in like a, a, an advanced tech sort of um, camouflage paint that blended them into the sky. They fired single missiles at both towers, and the planes are actually projections huh. put into the sky with hologram tech. That's what the theory is. Mm. Not buying that one. I don't think no, that just, just because there's a holographic duck in Tokyo and Tupac is still doing concerts doesn't mean they can do planes. Yeah. There's so much, you know, 102 minutes that changed America, or three minutes, whatever. Um, there were so many different, as- like, you know, filming aspects of that second plane going into the tower. It couldn't be, could it? Mm. It just couldn't. So we all we all agree that the Pentagon was a missile, blatantly. I blatantly, think, yeah. That, you know, I just want to add that the, the engines on this so-called plane um, was meant to be made of titanium. They would just not have disappeared. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, the other bits might have crashed up. Did and they find some... They, they, find find the they find airplane bits in the World Trade Centre, didn't they? Debris. Apparently so, yeah. Mm. But we're not debating that there were no, no, two just, planes there. No, I know, that's what I mean. So if you found them in that, mm-hmm. why wouldn't you find them in that? Oh, and the, Pentagon um, one. the Pentagon's got anti-aircraft missiles that detect mm. um, the transponder for any planes. So as, as soon as it comes within range, doing this circular motion, oh, round, yeah. to, round to get, to, you, the trajectory of it looks like the, the holes, it's come straight in, isn't it? Yeah. It's not even at Almost a ground level. level. Yeah. So, the missiles would have took it down straight off. And they knew that, so they had to use a missile. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Flight 93. Literally, boom. <laughs> <laughs> Also, just a, a little quick touch on the 9-11 Commission. Uh, do you know there's 28 pages of that that were entirely redacted? Mm. Now, you can apply... Well, obviously, if you're a member of the government, you can apply to go and look at them, but you're observed all the time. You can't take pictures. You read them, and then you're told to get the fuck wow. out. Apparently, people have come out with, like, just wide eyes, pale as fuck. It's like... And think about it, every time they redact something, it's something they don't want you to know because yeah. they did it wrong or they did something yeah. wrong. That's terrifying. 28 yeah. whole pages. Yep. Mm-hmm. Guys, Flight 93. Mm-hmm. The fourth hijacked plane, Flight 93, crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. It's believed the passengers fought back and crashed the plane into a field. Skeptics believe that uh, Flight 93 actually landed safely while a substitute plane was shot out of the sky. Other theorists believe the passengers were murdered or relocated and will never be found. 
I think it was put down because they it went off radar for half an hour, then come back on radar, then supposedly they took back the plane and crashed it into the field. Yeah, I think it was shot down. I think it was a bit of both. I think they went to go and retake it, and I think that the uh, they they did shoot that one down. I think so, whether it was a drone or whether it was that unmarked plane they saw flying away that like a commercial uh, Lear jet. I don't know, but I think it's a bit of both because the wreckage of that plane was scattered over a wide area. Mm -hmm. If it had just come down, it would have obviously mm -hmm. broken up, but it would have still would have been chunks. I mean, these things are designed to stay together, aren't they? Look at the Lockerbie bombing, the most famous photo of that. The cockpit's still intact. <laughs> these... Yeah. So I think it's a bit of both. I do think this one was shut down. Mike, what do you think? I'm not sure on this one, I'll be honest. The fact that this, you know, it just went off radar for 30 mm, yeah. minutes. There's that, that bloody picture that looks like the, the terrorist, the, the so-called terrorist just took a picture of him taking back the plane. That looks a bit mm. staged, a bit dodgy for me. Yeah, it just reeks. <laughs> just reeks. It of, does. Of, the whole thing does. Do but, it. Yeah, yeah, but this, this really reeks. <laughs> but think... Think about what a massive PR boost this was, a morale boost as well to the American, a PR boost for the government and a morale boost for the, for the, for the country. They fought what? back. No, the country's on its arse, they've just been attacked. One plane, they fought back, they were true American heroes, they took that plane back mm. and then it crashed because none of them knew how to fly a plane, but they took it back anyway. Let's roll. That was printed on T-shirts. It was written on the side of tanks going into Iraq. Mm. It was like that was the national rallying cry. What's more American than let's roll? That's why I think that um, maybe it's a little bit of both, and then they shot it down. Mm. Or maybe they just made up the whole thing, shot the damn, shot it down, and made up the whole thing mm. to give us that morale boost, to give the people that all oh, these these guys fought back. They didn't go out like. It's, no one's going out like a pussy when someone's got a fucking knife to your throat. You're not going to do anything, but... You know, they, they fought back, they took it back, and they're, they're American heroes now. We can take some pride in that. We got one back on the day. We might have, we might have gone down 3-1, but we got one back. Maybe that's what orchestrated it. It's more likely to be orchestrated, though, isn't it? Yeah. Cooked up as PR. Yeah. Let's face it, it's a much better PR story to say they took the plane back rather than we blew uh, 63 of our passengers out, the, <laughs> of our civilians out the sky. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? Yeah. Just a bit. Yeah. And it was, a, 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 you know, on the day, it was a case of look over here, look over here, look over here. Oh, so much bad news got released. Yeah, don't, don't, be, looking, don't be looking at Twin Towers. Just look over here a minute, you know. Yeah. This is happening over here. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this. Quick, release this really bad news. Yeah. Tell me the economy's failing. Today's the day to do it. Well, the day before, when Rumpstock came out and said that Pentagon had lost so many billions. Yeah, well, yeah, we said it earlier, yeah. yeah. Crazy. What about that the hijackers are still alive? We've just met, we have touched on this. After the September the 11th attack, the Loose Change documentary stated that all of the hijackers are actually alive in other countries. It is possible for two people, different people to have identical names, but they did raise a good point. How did the passports of the terrorists survive the explosion? Ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, in the aftermath of the attacks, passports and identification were found as evidence. Many sceptics question how identification was made out of paper survived the same explosion that destroyed the buildings and burned all that paper that was in the, in the buildings. How did the passport... I mean, they found the passport, like, a few blocks away, didn't they? Just singed. Just a bit singed. <laughs> now, when the first plane hit, they did find bodies on the floor still strapped into their chairs. I don't know why that was a particular thing with the first one, but they apparently found mm. bodies of passengers still strapped into their chairs. But a passport? Paper? I mean, is that the one where the cockpit came out the other end and maybe his body was thrung out? <laughs> he's, he's just before the explosion, he had his passport in his top pocket, the windows had gone, he was, his body was jolted forward and it came shooting out of his pocket, out an open window, slide, just behind the fireball, like, like that dog in Independence Day when it escapes the fireball and jumps into the little room. Yeah, yeah that's what happened to that passport. It just got its tail singed a little bit, but then it fucking fell to the floor a few blocks away. How is that for a possibility? Yeah. Anyone the buying that? The thing that makes sense is that they let it out before the plane hit the building. 
Yeah, but then you throw a passport out and open. I don't even think you can. You can't open a window on a plane. You can't. You get sucked out. Ah, that's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, But they're still doing five hundred miles an hour. You crack the window on that. You're still getting your arm taken, aren't you? Yeah. So exactly. So it doesn't make any sense, does it? You're gonna stick your head at the window on that one. The passport in that hand, did it? That got just sucked out of his hand. Give me the passports, we're in these anymore, just to take the building. It just I'm, I'm makes not, sense. I'm not buying that at all, no. you know. No. That's planted, for sure. Here's when we asked you asked you asked the question on last week. Mm. Cell phone calls made from the plane were faked. So in-flight calls were made from cell phones in both hijacked airplanes. Scientists and skeptics maintain that cell phones could not receive reception from the altitude at which planes typically fly. Others questioned a phone call from a son to his mother in which he referred to himself by his own yeah. first and last name. That's dodgy, isn't it? Like, hi, Mum, it's Gary Mills. <laughs> so oh, that sounds yeah. terrible, doesn't it? Oh, man. I haven't heard that one. Yeah. I was on that Loose Chains documentary. I watched it's it. Gary been... Mills here. Your son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's literally what he said. And I bet he never worked as a crisis actor again. <laughs> and, it, of course... 2001 there's no way cell phones are getting to the ground no I looked into it a bit more it's, it? it's, 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 it wasn't there the infrastructure no. wasn't there well, like I, I said even on Norwegian Air I couldn't get it no I, I've, I've looked at it on, on both sides like arguing for like the, that they could be done and arguing against because you know a lot of the debunkers are just like yeah yeah they're totally fake but as they're coming down if you turn your phone on as you you know coming to out you know as they're coming in yeah as soon as they get off the coast of New York, is that enough? I should imagine so. I don't know. I don't think the tech, I don't think the range was there. I don't think the signal strength was there. We're talking 2001. I think maybe... Unless the, you had a sat phone. I think maybe the, the stewardess calls from the plane phone, I think, would, would make sense that if that worked. Because so I think there's got to be some kind of way for the crew to talk to the, mm. the ground other than the pilot's radio. Yeah. Or if the crew can't get into the cockpit. But wasn't, wasn't their, uh, their journey over land anyway? Because it was American Airlines. They were going mm. from one bit of America mm. to another. So they... they took off from Boston, I think the first one mm. did. So obviously that's in far, land. Far away. That's no. But I don't know. I just don't think the infrastructure... Even as they come down lower, you'd still be talking a good sort of... Well, they fly at, what, 20 to 30? You'd still be coming in at sort of 10,000 feet, wouldn't you? And you'd be dropping down all the time. But is that enough time to make a phone call when you... Because the two towers aren't far from the sea. They're, they're part of the, the coastline, aren't they? It's, it's the, well, they're visible because they're huge, but they're not that far. They're not hidden away in the middle of Manhattan, New York. They're, they're more towards the edge, aren't they, in the financial district? So, I don't know. I, 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 don't, I just don't think it was there. I mean, at one point, I couldn't get signal in Ironbridge fucking mm. five years ago down the road. Yeah, you'd, you'd think it'd get down a little valley. <laughs> and that's just a little valley. Yeah. <laughs> On a plane yeah, that you, I... You could argue the hills and the trees obstruct it when you're in the air. You know, we don't know, I don't know, I haven't spent much time in a hot air balloon lately, you know, checking it out. Well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> You went to a balloon fiesta the other day. Why were you there? Why yeah, were you? Yeah, so they just jumped in and just yeah. went free ride. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I'll, be, I'll be back in eighty days. I'm travelling the world. Uh-huh. <laughs> Tested out my mobile phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's one that's utter bollocks. Uh, it's included out of um, a sense of completeness, I guess. Um, but you know what the it is with conspiracy theories. There's always something slightly anti-Semitic. Mm. This one's crap. To be fair, it's been, this one's been disproved to Howard. There is no use that uh, 4,000 Jewish employees took time off from work on September the 11th, 2001. Some of the first people to recall the attacks on camera were also Jewish, allegedly. I don't know, to know did, you, did they ask them? Many became suspicious and put the religious group on the radar as suspects in the wake of the attack. Well, of course it would, because that's a standard risk Christian response, isn't it? Mm. Scapegoat the Jews. Oh, what can I do? I can blame the Muslims. Oh, the Jews haven't been blamed for in a while. Let's have a stab at that to begin with. Anti-Semitism runs rife in there's, there's no, conspiracies. There's, there's no nothing to this, no. Nothing at all. No, no percentages of people that didn't come in by faith. No. Into the towers that day. Or... I don't know, unless they were overtly... You can gen- argue, so you're, you're believing in, in the one to do with, like, you know, the bankers and the, you know... 
putting the money on, but you didn't not believe in... That Israel would tip off its own citizens in America to save them on that day. Because it's only because they'd warn the Americans themselves, as well as MI6 had probably warned them, and I don't know, a few other friendly intelligence agencies might have had these guys on their radar, and of course it was ignored because of rogue elements in the US government. I just, I just don't think that... The, the Israel would then go, quick, contact every Jewish person living in, in New York and who works at the Twin Towers, because they've got a list of that somewhere, no doubt. And co- nah, it's rubbish. <laughs> Unless they've really infiltrated American society to the point where they've just got, like, not so much sleeper agents, but just someone who, I don't know, who just works in that building and he's been approached by Master had one drunken night and said, hey, you ever do anything for us if we ask you? And he's like, yeah, why not, buddy? Claps his shoulder, and then there's great might not be in touch with you ever but one day we might need you to do something and then that September 10th call all your Jewish mates stand on to work tomorrow unlikely innit mm. Mm. just the logistics alone of it everyone just likes to point I think everyone just likes to point the finger don't they after, everyone after, loves to point the after, finger after, at the Jews let's tra- face it after a tragedy you know yeah I mean come on it's, 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 you know you can, God you can go back fucking hundreds of years the Jews were blamed for the Black Plague Skip yeah. forward a bit. A lot of these people have come out after and said, I got a phone call the day before not to go in. Yeah. yeah. 4,000 people. Yeah, but they wouldn't, would they? I mean, then, look, then it's going it, it, to, you know, just supports the argument, so they're not going to come forward, even but, if it was but, true. Well. Yeah, I wouldn't want to piss off Mossad in all fairness. <laughs> what, 4,000? But still, it's normal it, people, isn't it? It's normal workers. Yeah, you're yeah. telling me they're going to call up like their best mate, Jerry, who's yeah. not Jewish, and go, Jerry, man, you, 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 your kids go to school with his, you're really yeah. good pals with him. Yeah, yeah. Jerry, you're going to work tomorrow, man. Yeah. I mean, look what happened during... You'd be, what kind of monster would you be? Yeah. <laughs> Trying yeah, to block the House of Parliament. He told one person and, and fucked the whole thing up. Yeah. <laughs> That's how that 4,000 people being told beforehand. Exactly. No. No, I don't get it. I don't buy it. I just think it's... We've included it because it's on the list. I, I think it's just your standard anti-Semitic, let's throw something at the Jews for this one. Mm-hmm. Black boxes found by the search crews were kept secret. And during the weeks following the attack, the planes black boxes were one of the most important items under investigation. They were the only evidence into what happened inside the cockpits of the plane. Three of four black boxes was found, but only one was in good enough condition to hear. The tape was not initially released, but was shared with the families of the victims in 2002. Uh, Skeptics believe the tapes were not disclosed in order to support a secret scheme. I think wouldn't that just be sort of procedure that you wouldn't just go releasing the black box recordings if only one of them's half decent anyway? I don't know. I don't know what the protocol is. Um, you would if there was such really stuff, d- d- distressing stuff on there. They wouldn't mm. make it public, would they? The nation's just had a big enough shock as it is. You don't need to listen to the pilot screaming Allah Akbar as he, or Alan Snackbar as he, he flies into a pl- into a building. You don't need to hear that. No. Victims' families want to listen to it, then that's that's on them, I guess. But there wasn't much said about the black boxes after it all, was it? You know that that hasn't even come up in hardly any. Well, not one of the documentaries or mm. the. The things I've been looking into hasn't ever doesn't say anything about them when no. they they should be scrutinised and reported on, shouldn't they? Really transcribed or something? Like at least I, I'll probably agree with the three out of four weren't good enough because obviously there's only three planes actually hit the Pentagon, didn't? Mm, <laughs> yeah. They've got the footage of that and it's all perfectly good. Mm. I don't know. I mean, Flight ninety three is probably one they got it from, which is probably where you get the let's roll thing from. So that's the one. The two tower ones, would they survive that? I mean, I know they're well built, but it's had, two t- it's had a tower coming down on them, hasn't it? Never mind the impact. Yep. And the thermite. And the fire. And the possible thermite. Again, the black boxes, most of them didn't survive, but the passports did. Amazing, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> strangely, them black boxes are designed to survive air crashes. I mean, obviously, you're not probably designed to withstand stuff. Passports on. But, but passports. I'm going to cover myself in passports. I'm going to get a load of old void ones and cover myself in them and then I'm going to see if people can... See if you, oh, I'm going to see if people can shoot me. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly passports are made out of something like fucking adamantium. Yeah. I'm surprised, you know, the, the black boxes survived because, you know, the when the, the two buildings collapsed after, they found molten metal found at the bottom and it took them 100, and, 100 days to put out. Wow. 
So, how did this passport survive if everything mm. was molten at the bottom? That's which, which makes me think, you know, when the, they use this thermite on the rest on, on, on it, underneath is where they put most of, you know, the detonation, hence, you know, because it, it had like six basement levels, if not more. And the underground... But there uh, were people in the basement and they survived, didn't they? They, that's where they pulled some from, yeah. Mm. Mm. Not many, mind. The, sh the train station underneath the underground mm. station was like not completely wrote off. I think a couple of people down there might have been pulled out. Mm. Still, the black boxes, they shouldn't have survived if there was molten mm. metal found at the, at the bottom. Here's one uh, a bit more uh, financial uh, the Bin Laden tapes. Fake. Mm. Initially, Osama bin Laden denied any involvement with the attacks, which that's true. They didn't yeah. accept responsibility for at least a couple of weeks. Soon afterwards, numerous tapes came out claiming he changed his mind and took full responsibility. Many skeptics believe that bin Laden was targeted because of his stake in the stock market, as well as because of former President George W. Bush's personal business ventures in the Middle East. Worth pointing out, the Bush family are well in with the Saudi royal family. They are family themselves to the Saudi royal family. Right. Both of them are oil men. The Bush family are oil men. So they made their money. Yeah. And they invested in a lot of businesses that George W. Bush set up. And failed with. Yeah. But it uh, doesn't matter. He had a go. Mm. Uh, and then they got a president. Mm. Yep. Yeah. And all the Bin Laden family, the day after the attacks, were left to fly out of the country. Anyone's yep. in. Only plane yeah. flying on September 12th was the one that took out the Bin Laden family of the USA. Yeah. Took them out of the USA. It's, that, how crazy is that? that, they isn't didn't even, that it, that isn't even a coincidence, is it? Didn't it's even get questioned. Like they got given free sort mm. of passage. And is it is that because, you know, they're stitching them up, so they were just like, right, fucking give them free passage. Now remember, the Bin Laden family is very, very big. I mean, Osama was one of how many? 52. 52. So, let's assume that these are some very, very distant cousins, or a half-brother. He's He was 17 or 52, I'm sure he was. Let's say this is 49 or 52, mm -hmm. who he's never even met, and his family, and maybe another brother who he's never met. Then, okay, but why don't you question them? Yeah. Yeah, okay, I can understand these people might be in danger if, we, if people are aware of who they are, even though they've had no contact with him for years, mm. but or never even met the guy. Say, he say turned up for a wedding once. Yeah, say you're wanted by the police. You yeah. disappear. You're wanted for murder or something. It's the first thing the police are going to do. They're going to question his family and his friends. Yeah. If they know anything, that's the first thing you yeah. do in an investigation. So, just to say, ah, oh, no, it's all right. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm not saying you did anything wrong, but... Just, just the biggest just, manhunt in the world ever for this one guy. You're the family members. We ain't gonna question you. Just let you go. Well, it's one of them was gonna have called Bush and said, "Get us the fuck out of here," isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That, that's the be all. Or they've called the Saudi royals and said, "We need to get out of America," and then yeah, the Saudis have found yeah, Bush. Your plane's there now. Get on it. Mm. And most of the hijackers from Saudi Arabia. Why didn't we go and invade them? Would have made more sense, wouldn't it? Because Bin Laden was, was a Saudi. It was never considered even as an option. I mean, of course not. Straight away, Rumsfeld and Cheney wanted Iraq. Straight away, fourth largest reserves of oil in the world. And they, well, they wanted seven, didn't they? And they haven't been selling it. Well, it was that like General Wesley. Oh, Clark. Clark. Well, they were saying seven. It was only yeah. Libya and all that, but it's obviously never progressed to that because they didn't get the quick they got decisive. Six out of seven. Did they? Yeah. Afghanistan, Iraq. Libya, Somalia, oh, fuck, I can't remember who it is now. There's another Adamar? one. No, there's another one, and then the seventh is Iran. Mm -hmm. That's the one they haven't got yet. Yeah, they won't be doing that. It's funny that, isn't it? Yeah, and they're, uh, they're all the, rich in oil. Yeah, like weeks after 9 11, he was like, uh, Oh, we're going into Iraq. And this general was like, well, Oh. Uh, oh, no, it wasn't straight away because we had to wait till 2003 for Iraq. Because they, wanted, uh, to go yeah, in, they it, wanted to go in straight away, and they yeah. even had the plans on the shelf. That's they had why it was so propaganda easy. propaganda made for a couple they of want, years. They wanted the propaganda to give the public yeah, a reason to want to go this in. This was a few weeks after 9 11. Yeah. They said to the general, Yeah. Oh, we're going in Iraq next. And he's like, Oh, Saddam Hussein, is there links to Al Qaeda? He goes, No. 
The guy above him said no. It's Colin Powell. Oh, was it? it was because he was the, the head of the mm. defence staff and he was like even though he went to the UN didn't he and mm. made the case for the WMDs but initially he said no because you need to get the public on your mm. side for that and alright they're not going to support support a full scale of Iraq when there's no ties you need to give it some yeah, time gonna say, paint them it? as the bad guy yeah. and then we'll go we'll do Afghanistan first yeah but a few weeks after 9-11 the general the guy in charge talking to General Clark said uh, we're going into Iraq next, and then he'll give a, a list of seven countries ending with Iran. No, so that's no. a few weeks after 9 11, they already had a plan to go into all these countries. Yeah, the plans were on a shelf. Yeah. They were just, that's why everything was put together so quickly. The project of the American New Century, they said. Yeah, we need a new Pearl Harbor, we need a catalyzing yeah. event, get the American industry up and running, get everything in your country behind it. Yeah. It's a forever war. Mm-hmm. We're always because you can't win a war against an ideology, can you? No. You unless you kill every person who believe, believes that ideology. I was just thinking the money that has got to have been like pushed around because of this. You know, if if they'd have just spent the money not building the proper propaganda, actually you spent the money on defending your own shores and leave everybody else the fuck alone. Just think how you know good America could be. Oh, they just built their infrastructure, their industry, yeah. their healthcare system. Yeah. They Build that up instead of instead of your your ever ending yeah. bloody war. The UN gave the American in- infrastructure a grade of D plus. Right. That's how bad it is. The whole highways are crumbling and everything. Because well, they spent. Not just out of interest. I don't know. The UN. What do they know? <laughs> they can come to the Shropshire Roads and have a look. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Shit. Yeah. I think we're better than America. Yeah. We're more socialist, aren't we? They spend fifty percent of their all their uh, taxes on defence, don't they? I don't know. Is it is it fifty or is that drop now? <sighs> they just increased spending. It's probably more. Nah, hang on. It's not fifty. I'm certain of that. I thought it was fifty, but it's not. I see. G- it GDP it? spending. No, not GDP, GDP spending. Fifty percent of the taxes. Ah, so taxes. American US taxes spent on the military. $778 billion does put them at the highest spending by a country mile. Yeah, they spend more than the f- next five. Yeah, they do. Um, do you want to know? Just have interest? Mm-hmm. China's next. So the US is on $778 billion a year. China's on 252 India's 72.9 Russia 61.7 The United Kingdom is 59.2 I'm crazy. Yeah. All right. I can go with the taxation thing. But still, the business dealings that went on after this. Mm. I don't, we can't stress that enough, really. Is there any more? I, uh, I think I've got, done everything I've got to do on the conspiracies. Mm. We've probably missed a few that uh, there's that bloody many. I mean, there's the holographic planes. Yeah, the no planes theory. No planes theory, yeah. Apparently, because it's physically impossible that the Boeing planes could have penetrated the steel frames of the towers. I was going to say, it's got to be st- steel structure going up the middle and there's got to be something holding them corners together. So there's going to have to be some sort of steel or s- something going up to make the corners of the building. Because the reason they put most of the steel on the inside is so they could sell more space, shopping space and office space, looking out of the windows. If all the steel's in the middle and then you make your, ma- your main bloody elevator shaft up the middle... Yeah. And everything's like facing outwards, isn't it? And everything's got a great view. So yeah. And of course, this whole thing has been dreamt up before. Operation Northwoods. Yeah, absolutely. You ever heard of that? No. But I think it was what, 60, something Two. like that? 1962. Um, 1962, US tensions of Cuba are really high. You've got the Cuban Missile Crisis in the British. The British are about to happen, haven't you? Yeah. See how he comes up with this plan. Well, they're going to let off bombs in several major US cities and blame it on the Cubans yeah. so the American public would support a war against Cuba. Familiar? <laughs> yeah. Incredibly so. So they thought of this a long time before it happened. They wanted to implement it in the 60s. Yeah. What more proof do you need? Yeah. All right. um, Court ritual? Okay then, let's move on to the final part of this. Uh, let's go over the greatest conspiracy of them all. Was 9-11 a mass occult ritual? Okay. This is from a book by uh, called The Most Dangerous Book in the World, called by a guy called S.K. Bain, which is uh, where I'm taking my source from. Okay. 
Uh, so, in magic with a K, because it's not magic tricks, it's proper magic. Okay. Or what proper people think. Magic. What people think is proper magic. Remember, I don't know a great deal about this. It's very complicated. I've tried to learn about it a bit more, but none of it makes any fucking sense to me. But this is the basically the watered down version for simpletons, like okay. me. You two are smarter than me. So, in new, there's going to be a lot of numerology. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of symbolism, coincidence. Okay. But some of it you think, oh, bugger me. Maybe. So, let me start by saying that the number 11 is considered the most evil number. Oh, right, okay. This is the courtism. And obviously the number 11 features very heavily in this day. It's the 11th of September. Yeah. We have Flight 11. And the two towers themselves are basically an 11. Yep. yep. The 11, also seen as symbolising the Twin Towers, could themselves be modern, powerful versions of the ancient pillars of Hermes. Hermes was the god of trade and commerce, as well mm. as doorways, roads, boundaries. Right? He is basically what they refer to as the psychopomp in this scenario, he's the guy whose attention you're kind of trying to get to act as the middleman. He's going to escort the souls of the dead between the boundary. But this is a gap between the towers. Okay. Oof. Okay. Yeah. It's giving a nod to an ancient god, basically. Mm. These things are representations of the Pillars of Hermes, which were two, eight, what they called, ancient wonders of the world. Yeah. That was the Pillars of Hermes, or one of them. Mm. It's a gateway, it invoked multiple aspects of his character by uh, conducting the ceremony and destruction of these modern representations of the Pillars of Hermes, fittingly for the god of doorways, the opening of a metaphysical doorway. It is mental. Okay. Cool. In there. Now let's just move back a second. You know Freemasonry, we talked about the Freemasons. Yeah. They like pillars, don't they, the Freemasons? Yeah, it's the... Um, Temple of Solomon, isn't it? That's it. They also represented uh, the pillars Jackie and Boaz. Oh, I don't know. They were the doors on the which Hiram of Tyre made for Solomon on Solomon's Temple. Okay. These things were like the big two towers. Yeah. And then we get into a little bit of Alistair Crowley as well and Thalamerism. Thalamic view, his religion oh. he kind of made up. I want to give you a quote for Crowley. I was not content to believe in a personal devil and serve him in the ordinary sense of the world. I wanted to get hold of him personally and become his chief of staff. Huh. So the number 11, very, very bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Not good. It is literally the number of magic himself. Alistair Crowley, writing in the Book of the Law, he states, my number is 11 as all of their numbers are to us. The repeated use of the number 11 is not only categorised the nature of the act, but also signalled the commencement of a magical operation. Mm. War and terror. Yeah. Now we know we mentioned the goat. Yeah, my yeah. pet goat. My pet goat. Let's focus on that a second. A goat, obviously, is the Baphomet. Yep. Yeah. Now when Anton LaVey published the Satanic Bible, he wrote that a black mass is basically just a parody on the religious service of the Catholic Church. But Bush here, a proclaimed Christian, is reversing that in a way because yeah. he's listened to a story about a goat. I read this book that I may study the nature of my deity. His deity mm -hmm. being a goat. Baphomet. Yeah. Has anyone ever watched Vicar Dibley? Yeah. There's a scene in it where there's a goat. Mm -hmm. You know when they have the animals yeah. in the church? And she's sat standing there and there's a goat there an upside down crucifix. Yeah. No way. And she says, what are you doing in here? And stuff like that. And it's just like, it, I just thought instantly that's fucking, that's well dodgy, isn't it? Absolutely. Now in the class's reading of the pet goat, the direct instruction method was utilised. The teacher pointed at the syllables of the pen on her book and read in unison with the children. The overall effect, not unlike being the ritualistic chanting of a religious ceremony or mass. So there sits Bush as a satanic high priest in Devil's Paradise listening to the children. Yeah. He's sitting there doing that while people are burning to death. 
Yeah, because yeah, it, it sat there for, you know, 15 minutes mm. and he just digesting the news. Yeah. And the Pentagon. Mm hmm. No, it's, it's 70. A pentagram. It's a pentagram, obviously, but 77, Flight 77 strikes the Pentagon. Yeah, allegedly. Mm -hmm. The Pentagon, which sits on the 77th meridian, hmm. it's 77 feet tall. Alexander LeVay, founder of the Church of Satan and author of the Satanic Bible, lists 77 infernal names of the gods and goddesses called upon, which make up large part of the occupancy of the royal palace of hell. The number 77 is also a Masonic symbol. The, Reven the number of the Revenge of Lamech, ancestor of Hiram Abith, the Master Mason. Right. No, a lot of coincidences, mm -hmm. a lot of numerology all tying up, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Obviously then, we have the Pentagon itself, which is a powerful symbol in the act of magic. And also, what is the symbol of Satanism? It is a pentagram with a goat's head inside, yeah. covering two bases now. Yeah. Just an interesting thought. Yeah. I'm totally on board with this already, yeah. So far. <laughs> Man, he's off the fence. Um, I believe these people believe this thing, this stuff. I really do. Good sticking with the Pentagon, a little bit more conspiracy. So on the morning of 9-11, a white mystery plane was spotted in the skies over Washington, D.C. In the minutes immediately following the attack on the Pentagon, it was seen circling in the restricted airspace above the White House, further alarming already tense Secret Service agents. As Mark Gaffney details in his book, The 9-11 Mystery Plane, the aircraft turned out to be the E-4B, the world's most advanced communications platform and state-of-the-art airborne command centre. It's worth $800 million. It's a modified Boeing 747. It's painted white. And its uh, most distinguishing feature is a pronounced pod located direct behind the cockpit. So you know that radar dome thing mm. the planes are. Let's put this information into context. Mm -hmm. The Air Force that couldn't get managed to get a single interceptor fighter jet into the air that day had its aptly named Doomsday Plane mm. aloft in the skies above Washington at the very moment the Pentagon was supposedly struck with pinpoint accuracy by a flying dunce after he performed a 330 degree downward spiral that lasted over three minutes. <laughs> Even though the airspace above Washington is the most heavily monitored on the entire planet, the Pentagon never ordered an evacuation of the building, and as a result, 125 servicemen and women died. The Pentagon was not simply aware the aircraft was coming this way, they were pretty much watching it. It's a piss take, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Completely. Yeah. And if you want to know the call sign of that plane mm -hmm. for that day, its name was Venus 77. Had to be, didn't it? Another 77. Yeah. And then and you... I bet, uh, and I bet the, you know, the, the official investigation doesn't even mention that bloody plane. Nope. And then if you want to put Venus against the zodiac form of a pentagram, thus in a cult thought this geometric form represents Venus and Venus invokes the pentagram, you get Satan, basically. Venus is the light bringer. Oh, yeah. Mm. Of course. The morning star. It's even called the morning star, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> now, a little bit of more coincidence. Flight uh, 85 is a Korean airline flight. It was instructed to change its transponder code and told to enter Alaska, even though it had to fly miles, hundreds of miles out of its way to get there. It had to uh, basically just put a distress code on and fly to Canada. Hmm. They were tracking it and they were shadowed by two fighter jets, but it ended up landing in Whitehorse, mm. Anchorage. Now, a little nod to Mr. Crowley, Ozzy Osbourne in the song, Mr. Crowley. Mr. Crowley, won't you ride my white horse? Oh. I think that's them having a bit of fun. Mm. Oh, and the guy who was uh, actually a the air traffic controller. Do you want to know what his his last name was? What? Crowley. Huh. Yeah. Of course. Um, the number ninety three, which came down in Shanksville, the part of the hijackers were described as owning Shanks, Shanks, Shanksville. The FBI agent on the field, Tim Crowley. Hmm. Never. Yes. And finally. The Statue of Liberty 
is basically a statue of Lucifer. She's an illuminator, she's a light bringer. She holds a torch, Lucifer, the spirit of intellectual enlightenment and freedom of thought is metaphorically the guiding beacon. And she is literally a satanic witness to the whole event. Interesting. I never thought of it like that, yeah. I thought she was just a gift from France. Ah. She was. She used to be a uh, copper as well. She's turned blue due to oxidisation. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So basically, she is the Lucer Luciferian presence during the occult mega ritual. Mm. Makes sense. Do what yeah. the world is the whole is the uh, whole of the law. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's so fucked up that is. What a fucked up philosophy to have. Yeah. Basically saying, do what you want regardless of the consequences to anybody else fuck them it's what you want see I, I was fucking that, that is dangerous as fuck there's so many little nods to those even the supposedly bad numbers in, in the whole terms of magic there's so many little nods to the Crowleyism the Thalema I think there's I, and I do genuinely think that the people in charge believe it yeah I do because I, I think they're evil bastards and I think this I think all these little coincidences is just they're having a bit of a laugh at us, but also like doing their own little thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm firmly on board, mate. I mean, oh, the my pet go. Can't just be a coincidence, can it? So, do you think Bush was involved then? Actually, I think Bush knew fuck all. I don't think Bush knew about it. If you want my my honest thing is it was Cheney organised it. Cheney was the one who had the contacts, certainly the business contacts. My bottom line on 9-11 is that rogue elements within the US government and the Saudi government arranged for this to happen so they could all make a hell of a lot of money and basically throw us into a forever war against an ideology that can't be won. Yep. Yeah. I think that's the bottom line. They needed this sacrifice, they needed a catalyzing event, they needed another Pearl Harbor. See, you are off the fence with, with the fact that it is, you know, some sort of set up. Oh yeah, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, fully. I, I think they, they were fully aware it was going to happen. But you still, you still believe in the pancake theory? I think, they, I think the, the towers were brought down by fire, yeah. yeah. And the impacts that caused damage internally. Maybe they just, they couldn't take it, I don't know. I'm open to the fact that there was at least deck cord wrapped around some of the, the bomb towers, the bomb pillars to bring it down. Or maybe, for all we know, it was a two-pronged attack and there was a suicide bomber in a van at the base of it who, after the planes had hit, if they didn't come down straight away, waited a bit and then went boom. Mm. I think it's easy just to plant... Little charges. Yeah. It would only take, building. you know, it would only take, you know... All you got to do is just... This is going to take... Fake some electric work. Yeah, fake some electric work maintenance mm. put them in the right places same in in building seven yeah they came down and it launched us into a forever war but i also i do kind of agree with the, the amount of coincidences with the numerology with that yeah i think they believe it yeah totally mm. you know they look like an 11 flight 11 for a start most wicked number Statue of Liberty standing there, cock in hand. You know, so what, right, what's the final thoughts on the conspiracies? I echo exactly what you just said. Apart from that, I believe that they had detonators in the building. I think they were going to take a chance. And I think they just relied on the people just, you know, just buying it at the time. I did. Mm. Until late, later years that I came to question it. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? People I mean, don't want to believe that their governments <clears throat> can do something like that. Like Sacrifice it. all them people just for more war. Yeah. Sick. Because we haven't really had a proper war, and we haven't got an enemy anymore. Not since the Soviet Union. No, when the finished. Soviets went in 91, you know, 90, 89, 90, there was no enemy anymore. The defence contractors were suffering. They had a war, in, a decent war in years. Yeah. They needed something, didn't they? And this is... Allowed to happen. Yep. America is not a democracy. It's run by the military industrial complex, Wall Street. It's run by, yeah, exactly. The people, I mean, you know, the way that Cheney positioned Bush out the way, not to protect him, because I think he just thought, you know, what, I'm, this is my idea, and he's, he's, it's believable if he fucking, he's too dumb, just mm. he can take the rap for it. 
Well, there's a still a website dedicated to outing and and asking for a proper outside independent investigation into yeah, it. Yeah, but they won't do it, will they? No, they'll never do it because they haven't got to. No, quite simply, it's uh, they're like, no, case closed. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I, I have heard that Bush apparently hasn't spoken to Cheney in, since the end of their term. He blames him for ruining his presidency. Mm. So I think that says everything. Mm. Maybe Bush didn't know. I certainly think Cheney and Rumsfeld did. Mm. Absolutely, and they hate each other, but I bet you they fucking got together on this. And like you say, Rumsfeld had the plans on the shelf to invade Iraq. They had the plans already drawn yeah. up. That's where they just like, oh, great, that's where they put it all together so quick. First Gulf War took six months to build up the forces. All right, it was massively, much more than they used in the second. But everyone was there pretty quick. It was all set up to go. Just pulling the plans off the shelf. We've had them for years. New American century. They needed that catalyst. Mm. And all them put options that were put on the airlines beforehand. Oh, come on, there. Eh? It was a select few that knew. Yeah. People who were probably working for Halliburton, who Cheney mm. knew. Yeah. People within the government, people within the armed forces. Same thing as JFK. Yeah. Claire? No and one believes done, that. They've done a, 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 an investigation into JFK now, a more independent one. I don't know. Um, I'm waiting for that Oliver Stone documentary. I might watch the film. We watch the film. I watch the film every week. Did you? Yeah, it's brilliant, isn't it? I'm sure I read something the other day when I was reading about 9-11, you know, them pushing for an independent review, that they've done one into, you know, the I, I don't know if the results have come out from the independent one for JFK, but I think if you push for long enough... The, them files are sealed for like 75 years and then they just get... Resealed? Yeah, for another 75, we're never going to know for generations. I mean, look at it this way, they won't give you Lee Harvey Oswald's tax returns. What chance have you got of finding out the truth about 9 11? Exactly. I have some sympathy for the 9 11 Commission because they got blocked off. Cheney and Bush wouldn't answer in no. court. They had a lot of questions that never got answers to yeah. because they were just stonewalled off. And they're just like, no, you just investigate it. And they're like, oh, can we speak to you? No. How about you, Vice President? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, what can you do? Who are they answerable to? Nobody. There's no. You know, of course not. There's no accountability, is there? No, no. Surely, it, it, true democracy. They're accountable to the people, but yeah, we know that's not surely true. they should. They should have like cooperated with the, the appoint, investigating officers and they whatnot. appoint them. Yeah, they know. You know, the people on these panels, they don't. Want, they know. They don't want to dig. They just want to and cover it up. It's, even, even. Even if you do have a little bit of a sort of crisis of conscience, go, you know what, I am going to tell the truth, I think it's going to stone more, yeah? And so you think, you think of your career. Yeah. Don't go asking too many questions. Think of your career, think of your family. Yeah. They'll destroy you, destroy your career. If that doesn't win, I'll just bump you off. Mm. Yeah. We live in a yeah, sick, so sick world. Total well, inside job for me, you know. Yeah. Too many inconsistencies. For the investigation, any of the people actually got out of the towers, they weren't spoken to. The firefighters weren't asked questions. You know, not enough questions were asked, not enough questions were answered. And, you know, because the, the big questions are still floating around out there. Mm. Yeah. You know. And we've had to live with the consequence of this now for 20 years. Yeah. How many lives lost? Not just Britain and American lives, and at least a million Iraqi civilians. The good 20,000 uh, Afghanis. Yeah, and we'll get into that next week. Yeah, the legacy. So, there we go. I've been Ben. Thank you very much for listening. Don't drink the flavour, don't join a call. Don't believe everything the government tells you. Yeah. <laughs> I've been Mike, thanks for listening. Peace out, may the force be with you. And I've been Claire, keeping an open mind, but not so open that it spills out your ears, guys.